Back in the day, pre-Credit Crunch, I remember there was a lot of controversy around new builds and off-plan properties, and yeah. lenders really started sort of trying to shy away from them. Has that changed? Are they still suspicious of new builds and off-plans, or are they now more mainstream? Um, I would say they're still a little bit suspicious of off-plans. They might not admit it, um, but, but, but no question there's still a a hangover from 2007, 2008 with some lenders. Uh, you build apartments and you build houses, they can be financed just like any traditional buy to let mortgage. A couple of things investors will have to watch out for, which they won't know, sadly, until we get to application stage, is overall exposure by lenders in particular developments. Mm. Generally speaking, most lenders will not be comfortable if they have any more than 20 to 25 percent of the development in terms of units. Um, we won't know that until we do a referral to the risk team. Generally speaking, risk team referrals, it can take anything up to two weeks before you get back and it can be a flat no or it could be, um, it, you know, subject to the value of confirming it's okay and within tolerance or it could be a flat yes. Makes sense though, doesn't it? Because a lender doesn't want to go into a development which is 100% rented. It's just saturating the market, isn't it? And other issues which may be less noticeable these days, but cladding uh, for any new build developments previously. Oh my goodness me, that, 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 was, that really was um, quite a labour intensive um, aspect. Um, I think the government's introduced legislation to try and um, minimise the requirements, but any building that has any form of cladding has to have an EWS1 form, although in fairness that might be, um, I think there might be new legislation aimed at uh, easing the requirements in that respect. You'll probably know more about it than me in fairness. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly blighted the market, hasn't it? And sometimes people will say to me, you know, should what's the, should should I buy houses? Should I buy flats? I mean, the old answer used to be, well, I'd look at the figures, look at the lease length, look at the service charge. But if the figures stack, to me, it doesn't make any difference, frankly, whether it's a house or a yeah. flat, if the, if the maths works. But nowadays, with the whole cladding thing, it could be blighted, totally blighted. Yeah, absolutely. And a couple other things which are... They're just annoying rather than major impacts. I've had a couple of new builds um, apartments come back with zero values because the EPC wasn't available, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, and that's becoming more of an annoyance than a fundamental issue because by, by their nature, new build apartments will have good EPC ratings. But generally speaking, the lenders' values can put in nil values if there isn't an EPC available. And that will involve a reinspection at yeah. another cost. Yeah, I mean that that doesn't make any sense technically, does it? Because you can get an EPC for a hundred quid. So if it's a hundred thousand pound apartment, you can knock a hundred quid off the value to cover the cost of getting the EPC. But anyway, that is that it's their technical point, isn't it? Don't come to us till everything's ready, I suppose. But yeah. and it's annoying because you know with a nil value, you go back to a client, and you know nobody wants to see a nil value. No, but it's not open on fairly negligible things, particularly for new build departments, where I think legally they have to adhere to minimum EPC standards in any event. Mm. Interesting, interesting. All of these things, actually, if from the point of view of a purchaser who's putting together a portfolio, it makes you think that if you have the cash available, you could sort of do quite well buying some of these properties for cash, maybe in the hope that one day the cladding is sorted and the EPC is issued. Yeah. Make a significant uplift. I hope you found this video useful and informative. And if you did, then please come over to my website, www.thepropertyteacher.co.uk, where you'll find loads more great property related resources, including free special reports to download and my best selling series of eBooks, which includes the Successful Property Renovators Workshop, 63 common defects in investment property and how to spot them. And if you're just starting out in property or if you want to grow your portfolio, you may be particularly interested in the Successful Property Investors Strategy Workshop, in which I'll take you through exactly how I started and built my property portfolio, starting literally with none of my own money and how I built a portfolio of £2 million worth of property 
in just four years. And that was starting from scratch. I'll take you through everything that I did right so that you can copy me and do the same. And I'll also show you everything that I did wrong so that you can avoid the mistakes that I made and so that you can progress in property and be far more successful far more quickly than I ever was. And this is based upon my own real life experience. And it took me about four years to actually work out how to do property investing properly. But in the 200 pages in the Successful Property Investors Strategy Workshop, I'm going to show you all of that four years knowledge condensed down so that you can use it immediately. And until next time, here's to successful property investing.